my main thinking regarding discipline is every time I coerce a young kid by using my authority, I am depriving that person of an opportunity to become more responsible. If I want the young person to change, it's not because what I'm going to do, it's because of what the youngster is going to do. And the key is, at least in my opinion, is collaboration, working with the youngster, and secondly, non-coercion. Now, let me show you how this works in real life in a different setting, and then I'll bring it back into a school setting. Some of you may have seen Robert Redford's film, The Horse Whisperer. Now, the model for that was a fellow by the name of Monty Roberts, who lives in Solvang, California, near Santa Barbara, California. And I know Monty, I visited, visited with him at his ranch. I'm going to share with you how he trains a wild Mustang, a wild horse, in 30 minutes or less, something that traditional coercive horse trainers could never do. The first thing Roberts does is he admonishes the crowd because this occurs in an arena. He says, any sound can spook the horse. So if you need to go to the restroom, do so now before the demonstration actually starts. When the arena is absolutely silent, the wild mustang is led into the arena and it gallops around 5, 10, 20, 25 times until the horse concludes nothing is happening to him and besides, there's no escape. Then Monty Roberts takes on an attack pose. He stands on one leg, the other knee leg lifted, arms outstretched, and grimaces, and the horse gets spooked. Again, the horse gallops around the arena 5, 10, 15, 25 times until the horse again realizes nothing is happening to him. Then Monty takes on his usual demeanor. And then on cue, the audience simultaneously hollers and claps. And the horse gets spooked. Now, a few things about horses. They are intelligent enough to categorize. They can classify, in this case, what's safe and what's not safe. And the second thing is they, they are herd animals. They live in herds. And so what they will do is look around to anything that's safe. Well, the only thing in the arena is the human. And so the horse slowly approaches the human. And when the horse is close enough, Monty Roberts very gently strokes the horse's mane. The horse looked for safety and found it. And then Roberts starts to walk. The horse follows. Now, Robert's program is called Join Up. Notice, he does absolutely nothing to the horse. As you will see in the discipline program, I don't do anything to the kids. The kids want to do what I want them to do. So the horse follows as Monty walks. And as he walks around the arena, by the entrance there's a person who looks looks exactly like Monty Roberts. He's dressed exactly like Monty Roberts, and as the horse walks by this person, the second person again gently strokes the horse's mane, assuring the horse that the horse is safe. The second person then walks about 10 feet ahead and picks up a blanket and puts it on the horse. About 10 feet further up is a saddle. The second person picks up the saddle and puts it on the blanket, and then reaches underneath and cinches the strap. And all this time, the horse is following Monty Roberts. About three minutes later, Monty turns around and gets onto the horse. And horse and rider continue to walk around the arena in less than 30 minutes. And the crowd goes wild. Now, how does he do it? Number one, the horse trusted the human. Trust is an interesting situation, so to speak, because if you lose trust, then you're not going to feel safe. And by way of example, many a friendship 
lost, gasped its last breath with the simple words, I don't trust you anymore. Chances are, if you were a friend and you didn't trust your friend, that person would not be a friend very long. Trust is essential for good, successful relationships. In terms of safety, physically, psychologically, emotionally, trust is critical. So let me share with you how this how I use this idea in a classroom. We receive new desks. And on the bottom of the desk were rods, uh, steel rods. They were really a bookshelf. But if you flip the rod a certain way, it would set up a harmonic. It was driving the faculty crazy. And of course, it happened in my classroom also. So in the book, in the resource guide, you will see a number of different unobtrusive approaches. The one I probably use most often is the pause. Now, when you pause in a classroom, 30 seconds can seem like three minutes. And I simply said, well, it seems like someone wants to operate on level B. I'll explain that. They want to make their own rules. One of my better students, a gifted and talented student, as it happened, Rita stood up and apologized. I did not ask her to stand up. That would have been coercive. And I did not ask her to apologize. But I realized when I first started this, standing and apologizing was a natural outgrowth of taking responsibility, which was the only thing I was after. Now, people said, how did, how did you do this? How did you have a, a teenager stand and, and apologize? And the reason is, I had created an atmosphere in my classroom where the kids knew they were not going to be punished. I had established such trust in them that they felt safe to admit when they did something which was irresponsible or not appropriate. Now, you can be the only person in your classroom who uses this approach. When I developed the system, I was the only one in my school. If you do, it will literally change the atmosphere of your classroom. If the entire school uses the raised responsibility system, the discipline approach, the entire culture of the school changes. And you can take a look at some of my videos so that attested by people, I'm thinking of one teacher in, or one principal in particular, Esther Severi, who was a principal of the school in Santa Ana, gang-infested area, and she will explain to you how using the system literally changed the culture of her school. So, the first thing that needs to you need to be aware of is, and I'm recycling the three key practices, I'm positive with my kids, I always give them a choice, and I prompted them to reflect by the simple statement of, well, it looks like someone wants to act on level B, making his or her own rules. The program is that simple. The question is, will you implement it?